today we're driving the 2022 BMW 230i. This has a 255 horsepower turbocharged inline four cylinder. It's rear wheel drive, unlike the M240i that we drove a couple months ago with the turbocharged inline six. Let's walk you around this 230i today, show you what it looks like inside and out. We'll talk about what it's been like to live with this week. We've had it out on track, we've driven it on the streets. Um, it's a pretty fun little package. We've compared this to the 240i. We can compare this a little bit to the two liter turbocharged Supra. Very similar powertrain, very similar vehicle. Um, we have the eight speed ZF automatic transmission and just the corporate BMW interior. This is actually a, a very nice place now. The two series felt like you were always getting a little bit more of a bargain basement interior. No longer the case with this new generation. This feels as nice in here as it does in just about any BMW and I really appreciate that. Starting price for this is around $37,000, but uh, as tested, we're up to about eh, a little under 50 grand with every single option. That's 240i territory, but uh, a lot of the options on this car you could definitely do without. 255 horsepower goes a pretty long way. Of course, that's BMW horsepower, so it's probably underrated just a little bit. And the important thing is we have a limited slip rear differential. Ooh, you can have some sideways fun in this. I swear, every time I see this new 2 Series, the looks start to grow on me. And in this color, it actually looks pretty sharp. I love the widened fenders. These are, I believe, what are they, 19-inch wheels? Yeah, they look pretty good, too. The suspension in this car is expertly tuned. It is just so well-balanced. It's actually surprisingly heavy. It weighs about 3,500 pounds, uh, but you don't feel it. We have a nice spacious trunk, pretty good. I don't believe we get a spare tire, just a tire repair kit. And BMW roadside assistance. These door handles are really cool looking too. It's a little bit chilly this morning, so some things are still frozen on the car. Passenger seat will automatically pull forward if you need access to the rear seats but the passenger seat doesn't pull forward that much. I wish it just went a little bit far, farther on these sliders. I uh, actually had quite a bit of trouble getting my car seat in the back here earlier this week. So I didn't really end up putting my son back here with our baby Duna car seat. But if you are an adult and you want to get back here, it's doable. You just have to kind of stretch a little bit. Set behind myself, I think it'd be a little bit more comfortable than whatever I have this passenger seat set to. But um, limited headroom, it's tight back here. Uh, definitely a little bit more room than something like a Subaru BRZ, but this is definitely a two door coupe with just a limited use back seat. You do get rear climate control back here though, and a couple of USB C ports, so that's nice. I'm really starting to like the spec on this car. This light interior is very nice. Pretty big sunroof. This has gotten a lot of attention this week in this gray. We have these active grill openings that uh, will open up, let more air to flow through. That happened on track when we got this a little bit on the warm side. Brakes held up beautifully on track this week. Again, that's gonna be a separate video. But uh, let's take a look under the hood. Check out this B48 two liter turbo. Fantastic little engine. Doesn't make the best sound, but it gets the job done. Super efficient, high 30 miles to the gallon on the highway, high 20s in the city. It's interesting, the six cylinder, BMWs are so efficient that there actually really isn't that much of a difference between the MPGs between the four cylinders and the six cylinders and the Supra and in these uh, two series cars. Now, some of you may know, there are two different types of two series, which is pretty confusing. There is the front wheel drive Mini Cooper based 235i and that's just kind of basically a, a Mini Cooper. Uh, this is a proper BMW with a rear-wheel drive chassis 
and excellent driving dynamics. So, I don't think we need to talk too much about the interior. We've gone over this car at length. Um, there's really nothing very different in this between a lot of the other BMWs that are on sale. We have lots of physical controls, buttons. This has all of the packages. So we've got a heated steering wheel, heated seats. Um, we've got a Harman Kardon sound system, which sounds pretty nice. A lot of safety settings and features. Um, little storage space right here. Lovely seats. A little bit of ambient interior lighting throughout too. Yeah, it's a very nice place to be. All right, let's take it for a drive. So the M240i that we drove earlier this year was on winter tires. And the highlight for that car really was that engine. That inline six was just an absolute gem to rev out. It sounded fantastic. Um, the chassis was really good. Steering was a little bit numb. There are some areas where this 230i improves upon that M240i. One, it's a little bit more affordable, about 40 grand, a little bit under $40,000, which is quite nice. And uh, it's, lighter, it's lighter weight. It's a little bit more of a nimble chassis. I think it handles better. Turn in on this car is so, so sharp. And uh, you actually feel that about 300 pound weight savings with this 230i compared to the M240i. And the fact this has a limited slip rear differential, it just, it's the right package. It's the right uh, formula for a fun driver's car. The two liter four cylinder isn't as charismatic as I would like it to be, though you do get an active exhaust, which is subtle you mostly just kind of hear that when you're parked. Let's actually listen to that real quick. So we're in comfort mode, giving it a little bit of a rev. We'll put it into sport individual. You can hear it changes. For sport individual, I have my steering set to comfort, engine sport plus, transmission comfort. We'll start off on that mode, I like that. Doesn't sound bad, but it's still just a four cylinder engine. Ride quality, excellent, even on these 19 inch wheels. We don't have any adaptive suspension in this 230i, which is fine. One suspension setup works great. BMW's done a really nice job tuning this for a comfort and performance blend. For the base model 2 series with some good options, I am really, really impressed with how well this drives and how much fun it's been this week. This 8-speed CF automatic, super responsive. chilly out this morning so tires are still warming up we're on a set of uh, high performance summers I believe they're Pirelli's even though the power to weight isn't the best in this car it still gets up and goes it has plenty of acceleration super responsive with the CF8 speed it's just a solid performing powertrain. It's not too fast though. You can still enjoy this on the street. You can still rev it out quite a bit. And I actually really appreciate that. I like how simplified the driving experience is here. It's not a ton of different modes. Um, it's not like an M car where you have all these M dynamic modes and M driving modes. You can turn, completely turn traction control off and stability control and have a bit of a hoon, which is quite fun. a paddle shifter, switch into manual mode, or hold it and go back into drive, or switch yourself over into sport mode, and that'll keep the revs up kind of high in spirited driving. Gosh, the mechanical grip here is just amazing. 61 miles an hour on this entrance ramp, and we're not even starting to complain yet.
the real highlight for this car is really the chassis. This is just a gem of a rear wheel drive front engine chassis. It just handles beautifully. I think it handles better than my BRZ. It's, uh, it hides its weight. It's just perfectly tuned. Turning is really sharp. There's a ton of mechanical grip. You get a decent amount of steering feel and communication through the chassis. And it's a very adjustable and very neutral at the limit. Kind of everything that BMW has uh, stood for over the last couple decades, but they maybe missed the mark on in a lot of their vehicles uh, up until recently. BMW is making some really good stuff now. And uh, in some ways, I kind of prefer a car like this over an M car because it's a little bit more daily driver friendly. It's a little bit more subdued and comfortable and livable. Whereas some of their new M cars are getting a little bit, a little bit harsh. This lacks the outright excitement factor, but I don't know, the, the livability is there and the fun to drive factor isn't lost on this 230i. Excellent. These M Sport brakes, part of the M Performance Package or M Sport Package on this 230i, perform really nicely. Again, the damping with this suspension is just, there's a suppleness over really large bumps and undulations, but also just this immediacy and nimbleness to the chassis that is uh, really quite addictive, if I'm being honest. Let's calm down for a minute, put this into comfort mode. Back into drive. This eight-speed auto is very smooth. We have stop-start that will engage. That's pretty seamless as well. And you don't really need to be in any of these special drive modes to have fun on this car. Your Sport Individual or Sport Plus Individual does a great job. Even Comfort is a fine drive mode. Engine just doesn't make as much noise. quite a few BMWs this year and I've got to say I think they are doing one of the best jobs in the whole luxury car segment with their interiors. They're functional, they're usable, they're nice and luxurious, they feel high quality um, and the integration of technology is really well implemented. This system, the iDrive, the center display, there's a lot of menus, there's a lot of features and system settings, but once you set it, you can kind of forget it. Apple CarPlay, super easy to access. Uh, it's wireless. We've got wireless charging down here with a couple of cup holders. Don't love the placement of these cup holders. It's not ideal, to be honest, but that's okay. It's a German car. <laughs> it's not designed around the cup holders, but um, I don't know. There's just a lot that's right about this. I like the driving position. These seats are nice and they're pretty comfortable even though they're quite hard and quite firm. Steering wheel is okay. I think I used to think that BMW steering wheels were a little bit on the thick side, but I feel like they've uh, narrowed out the spokes just a tad, especially where you put your hands at nine and three. There's still some thick elements here, but it's not overly thickened uh, like some of the older two series BMWs were. Heated steering wheel function is just wonderful, especially if you live in a colder climate. I would definitely spec that as an option uh, if you could swing it. Yeah, and just overall, a very nice interior with some really quite nice touches. I appreciate how all of these buttons here are matte 
plastic and not gloss black. Yes, there's quite a bit of gloss here, but if I'm being honest, you're probably gonna be leaving this tray open most of the time to access your phone. It's in the wireless charging element. So, you know, pros and cons. BMW uh, has their fully digital gauge cluster and instrument cluster here, along with head-up display, which is quite useful. They do this little trick where they make the revs rise and fall just a little bit quicker than they actually are in the powertrain, and makes you feel like the shifts are happening that much faster. A little bit of, a little bit of psychology in there, but that's okay. Let's do a launch. So let's throw us into Sport Plus, come to a stop, and set off. Launch control active. We get a really abrupt shift between gears when launch control engages. It's pretty quick, about five and a half seconds to 60 miles per hour. Let's see what this feels like in Sport Plus mode. Everything steering, transmission, engine in Sport Plus. Yeah, feels pretty good. Very snappy, very responsive. Still have a good amount of control over the personality of this car, which I really do like. <laughs> Just enough power to have some fun on a set of performance summer tires. So good. Really nice visibility too out of the sides. These frameless windows and this coupe configuration makes for a really nice side angle. Of course you have blind spot monitoring and all that stuff, but if you just want to look out of this car, it's a pretty open and uh, high visibility cockpit. A pillars aren't too thick. I've got a nice view out of my rear view mirror. Stuff like that helps. I do feel really low uh, seated in this 230i, so I can get a really nice low driving position. Steering wheel comes right up to my chest. This is pretty ideal for me at five foot 10. I feel really comfortable in this. Really quiet on the highway too. Guys, for the price, honestly, there isn't a whole lot that competes with this at this price point, I think. Um, there just aren't a lot of rear-wheel drive options left on the market. I would really be hard-pressed to choose between this and the M240i. They both are just about as fun to drive. I think, dynamically, this is slightly better just because it's, it's rear-wheel drive. It's got a limited slip diff. The steering is a little bit less encumbered by... Uh, you know, a drivetrain at the front end. I think this is one of my favorite BMWs of late, and definitely uh, I, would, I would take this over a Supra, over a four-cylinder Supra, and I think if I were considering an automatic BRZ or GR86, I'd give one of these a look instead because eh, it's a few grand more with some options. It's maybe about 10 or 12 grand more, but it's a really, really nice car takes the luxury up a, a few steps and uh, the automatic, the ZF8 speed in this is, is phenomenal. And the BRZ GR86, it leaves a lot to be desired. Granted, the Supra is probably a sexier, better looking car. And, you know, it's got a slightly shorter dimensions. It's a little bit smaller. I believe it has a shorter wheelbase. But I don't know, this 230i, really does just strike a very nice balance and uh oof 
This is tempting. BMW has done a really nice job here with this car. I just, I can't believe how much I've warmed up to the looks, too. It still is a little bit weird looking. But, again, if you're not sold completely, just get it in a black or something and call it a day. With all of the M performance parts on this 230i, it pretty much looks like the M240i that we had a little while ago. cylinder never seems or feels stressed or overrun. It's just very smooth. It's a little bit on the quiet side. But I think there's enough personality and enough sound to give you just a little bit of entertainment. Alright guys, well that's all I have to say about this BMW 230i. Top marks, well done. Let's wrap up this video with a brief sound system test. We'll give you one more walk around at the end, and that'll be a wrap. Harman is about average for a Harman Kardon in a BMW. Sounds pretty much like all the others do. Um, sounds pretty good. No, no complaints there. It's not class leading, but um, not disappointing either. So hopefully that gives you guys a good idea what the sound system's like in this 230i. Alright guys, that's going to be it for this one. Thanks again so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. This is a, uh, a very cool consideration, in my opinion, in the market these days. It's just a nice, nice performance enthusiast offering. It's nice to see BMW making a 
good enthusiast cars that aren't necessarily M cars anymore. And again, the two series is one series, two series has always been a good option. This new one, it just carries it on and makes it even better. Okay, that's it. We'll see you guys later. Take care.